Hello, let's look at how we can forecast population. There are different methods you can use to do your population forecast. But let's quickly see the ones we have here. We have four of them here. We have simplistic method, multiple regression, economic, econometric, and micro simulation. Each of these has its own peculiarity. But right here, we're going to quickly look at the arithmetic method which is the rate of growth is assumed to be constant. Although this is in practice, it's not really real because the arithmetic method is saying that the rate of growth is constant. But in most cases, you may not really find the rate of growth be constant over a period of time. But however, let's see how it goes. We're going to look at it in this um, uh, class. Right here also, we have the geometric method. The geometric method also known as the logistic or saturated um, method it has an s shape now how does it go if you are talking about the arithmetic method having a constant growth rate it's giving you a straight line for example you're going to have something of this nature or you have something coming of this is a straight line but when you are looking at the geometric method which has an s shape it means there is a deviation in the growth rate in this case you might have something of this nature it is not totally straight that is the geometric method now let us see how population growth rates uh, grow based on the arithmetic progression now this is a formula we have a formula for calculating the population growth rate using the arithmetic progression and what do we look at here you have the r which represents the growth rate and you have the pt minus p1 over p uh, sorry pt minus po over po the po here is the initial uh the initial year the current year and here you have times 100. let's see how it goes we have the interpretation right here r equals the percentage annual rate of growth over the period between the P1, uh, PT and P0. Now here the PT is what? Population in the last of the two censuses. Because here you're going to use the census of a country to get the population of that particular country. And from the census of the country, you have the first, the initial census, and you have the current uh, census. So the PO is the population of the initial census, that is the census before the last one. While the PT is the population in the last of the two censuses. So if you have had census in two different years, you will take the last one, that will be the PT, and the PO will be the initial census. Now, what does the N represent? The N represents the difference between the two dates of census. If a census was held, let's assume you had one census in 2015, and another census is held in uh, 2015, then you have another census in 2018 or thereabout. So the difference between the years is what you have here as the N. Now, let us look at an example. Here is an example you have if in 1991 population was 78 million and in 2006 the same population is now 148 million and the N, that is the number of years, that means you have to subtract, you have um, 2006 minus 1991. Sorry, this other one didn't write well. That is uh, 2006, 2006 minus 1991. That is how you get the N here, which is uh, 15 years. So when this is done, what do we do further? Because now we know the number of uh, the population in the initial year. We know the population as the PT. We know the population as the PO. So all we need to do now to get calculate the rate of change, we have to now substitute into this um, formula, which we have been given here. We substitute into this uh, formula. So what we go further, say therefore the rate of change, we, we by substitution, remember our PT is what is the 2006 year. That is what you have put minus P. Oh, the PO is 1990, 
1. Now, you bring again over there over 15. 15 is the difference between 2006 and 1991 times 100. Now, you come over, you now substitute figures into, because we have figures on them, then that will give us what? That will give your annual rate of change will equal to 0.87%. That is the annual rate of change. So once now you have gotten the annual rate of change, what is the implication here? So this implies that population was growing at 8.897% annually. This figure can be used to project further population because now you have no the annual rate of change. You can use it to project other population that you want to work on. Now let's still work further. Right here, population growth rates is based on, we are looking at it now based on geometrical progression. We have looked at the one based on arithmetical progression. Now we're looking at it based on geometrical progression. Again, we have a formula. If this is the formula, R equals anti-log, bracket open, log P1 minus log PO, the P is the, initial, the current here over N minus 1. What does it represent? R represents the average annual rate of growth of population. The, annual, the average annual rate of growth of population is usually calculated based at the mid-year. You use the mid-year calculation. You don't wait till the end of the year before you calculate the annual growth. Uh, the average annual rate of population. Now, you have again the P1 population in the last of the two recent census, which is the same with the other one with it, and again P0 population in the initial of the two recent census. Now, you have N number of years between the two dates. Again, just the same thing we did in the arithmetical uh, method. You have the number of years between the two days, the same thing we are doing here. Now, let's look at an example. In 1963, we have uh, 55,670, and in 1953, we have 30,402. Now, the number of years in between is 10. That means if you subtract 53 from 63, it will give you a difference of 10. Now, the log, the log reading, you say you can use your four-figure table, you can use your calculator. If you are using four-figure table, it's the same four-figure table which you use when you're in school, secondary school, you can use your calculator. And to use calculator to get this, if you look at the right-hand corner here, I have uh, highlighted something in yellow here, showing you what you need to do if you are going to use calculator. So let's proceed. Now, the solution to this, right here, we have to substitute the figures into what we have here. So remember that the log P1 is what is the 1963, which is the current among the two census dates. So you have 55,670 minus 30,400 over 10, which is the, the, the difference in the years, minus 1. And that gives us log this equals this. So when you have subtract, it will give you this. And if you look for log 55670, it will give you this. Either you use four figure table or you use your calculator. And that will further gives you 30, giving you this. You have to approximate it. We are only just approximating a, into it here. You have a log 30. 402 that will give you this because we are trying to break this one out now you see five five six seven it gives you this then this log we are bringing it here that is what is giving us this so if you look at the two we are bringing this one this one has been brought down here that is the log we are using there then this other one is the log we have put down here so that is how it goes. So we are bringing out to know what the logs represent. So what that has been done, the next thing we are now going to do, you come n is what? We already know n that is 10. We already know n to be 10. So we we'll come up, how does it go? You now substitute these figures because we have gotten the, right now, we have been able to know the log of this. We have known the log of this. And uh, these are the logs. So we now substitute them into it. So you have this coming in here, and you have 4.4829 4 4 over 9. Then that would, over 10 rather, then that will give you anti log of this. If you work out this, it will give you this in bracket minus 1. So you go further again. If you minus this from 1, what are you going to get? That will give you 0 0.06236. 
So if you approximate, that will give us 0 0.062. And what further, if you now have 0 0.062 times it by 100, that will give you zero to get a percentage because you can convert this into percentage. So to convert it to percentage, you times it by 100, that will give you 6.2%. Now, what has that got to do with us? Now, project population for 1973 in if 1963 population was 55,607, this is another example. You like in 19, we are want to know, we know the base year, 1963, that the population is 55,670. But we want to now know what will it be 10 years after then. So again, we'll come here. How do you now work on that projection? To be projected, you need the number of years between. 1963 and 1973, which is 10 years, and we have our growth rate. The growth rate is already known. If you go back again, we have 6.2%. Either you are using it in the fraction or 6.2, the percentage you have 6. So we have not the growth rate. So now we can use it to project because we have known the growth. We have calculated the growth rate. So we can now use it to project. Now, solution is this. We have, again, the uh, formula we are going to use anti log log PO plus N into log 1 plus 1. Then to look for anti log oxo, if you go through that red, the, the yellow uh, uh, place, the place I highlighted in yellow, you will be able to know how to get your anti log if you are using your calculator. Then again, if you come in here again, you work it down, the anti log of this with what? PO. We already know the PO is this. This is our PO. Then plus 10, the difference in the years, then into this. So what we need to do is to now look for the log of this, anti log plus 10 again. Then we already know what the R represents, which is the growth rate. So this is what we are bringing now here. The growth rate is 1.0, uh, 1.0, because this R, remember, we are bringing this down. And we are saying 1 plus R. So that 1 is if you add it to 0 0.062, it gives you this. Now, you come back, you work it out further. We have to now use 10 to times this because we already know what this log is now. We have gone to check for this log and it gives us this. So you go further again and you work it, it will give us this. And here you have anti-log of this. So all you now need to do is to go in and look for the Anti-log, if you add this plus this, it gives you 5.005. So what is the anti-log of 0, 0.0? That will give you 101.158. And this will represent that in this instance, you have in population for 1973, it will be 101,158. 101,158. That is what we're going to have as against 55,617 that was registered in 1963. Now, what is the implication for planners? In this case, you discover that the growth rate is high. The population is increasing. So when you have increasing population, definitely it means you're going to have more students that will be enrolled in school. In fact, if you cut across the different levels of school, which implies that you need to plan for your students. You need to plan for the age group that will be in a different level of school. Because if this is not done, then it will affect the general uh, economic situation. Walk through this. Practice more of it.